Hey everybody, and welcome back to Shenanigans. <clears throat> uh, uh, where so are we? I'll just jump over. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you guys make your way out of Hogwarts after um, Melissa checks in her uh, reading contest books. Uh, out of out of where now? You get you make your way out of where do we make our way out of? Or whatever the it's it's Hogwarts, and you you make your way out of Hogwarts and we, back we, no, 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 we, it is it is definitely not anybody else's intellectual property, and we definitely don't owe anything for right, monetizing this video. I don't know. I don't even. I've never even heard of this Hogwarts you're talking about. Woghearts, or what? I don't. I, I don't even remember anymore. I can't oh, remember. That, that, that I read. Yeah. Woghearts, is that what it is? Okay, you meet your way out of Wog Hearts, yeah. and you you meet up with uh, your your friend Carter, who has returned from skulking um, at uh, Shenanigans, I assume, um, because that is where all of our adventurers stay. Why would they have property in town? That makes no sense. Uh, sorry, I um, I explain I explain to the party what I've done, uh, and. That's kind of it. I'm, and then I say, I'm going to sleep now. Excellent. All right. I'm going to memorize my spells. What spells are you going to get, Ralph? Well, uh, I'm going to get mine a Hall's Reckless Dweemer. <clears throat> I, I named it after this girl I used to like named Nahal. Uh, she was pretty reckless, and I dream about her all the time. So this spell kind of reminds me of her. Uh, a Hall's Reckless uh, Dreamer. Um, and then I was thinking a feather fall spell, you know, and what with my string, if I, we need to carry something, I can just, someone can toss it in the air and then we can cast feather fall on it. And then before it hit, hits the ground, while it's still light as a feather, we can just kind of attach a string to it and pull it along. And that way we can carry large loads very easily. Got to make sure it doesn't ever touch the ground because, because once it touches the ground, it, it loses its uh, light as a featherness quality to it. So, um... You know, if we have to haul out a, a corpse or something, or a, you know, you just are really bad at flying a kite, then uh, it'd be real good. I don't know. I don't so think it's ever worked it on it for me. I don't, I don't think I've ever successfully cast this spell. It's always kind of come out funny. Because I don't think it works like that. Oh, it lasts for at least a minute. It lasts for around a level. Well, that's about a minute. So if we need to carry something over like a short distance, no, is that not a good spell? Oh, maybe no. uh, I got we one that makes me hold my breath for a long time. How about that one? You need I a like spell the fact to do the that? Wizard is looking for spell advice from the cleric, the like religious ma magic right. caster. Oh, other than, then the other spell I have, I, I can put fires out or, or make them get bigger, um, but not warmer. Just produce more light. Um, so, so all your spells, all the powerful magic you can do is one that's intended to be a spell failure that does something random. Two. Well, you hold on. Fall. I don't think it's Three. a spell failure. You can put out a fire. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, my magic works in its own charming ways, and to say that mine is based around failure, well, that that well, is I just that spell. is just a, a, that is rude. Okay, that is rude, ma'am. Isn't Nahal's Reckless Dreamer basically an intentional spell failure? It I is not a spell it failure. It. It you know reaches into your dreams and brings forth whatever's in there. It's a you know it, it makes dreams come true. It's, it's a wonderful spell. That is what it does. Mm hmm. Makes what's, dreams come true. What school of magic is it? Oh, I, I've never been to school. Ha <laughs> ha. Hmm, so you've got that one, and then one that makes Look, you... Look, why, why don't you just let me fire. take care of what's mine, and I'll let you take care of what's yours, and you've become awfully pushy lately. I, I you're, you're a little funny one. You used to I'm be so much sorry. nicer. What's wrong with you? I haven't had milk in so long. Just go get some from the bar. 
No, it's got meth in it. I don't know what meth is, but that milk is delicious. And if it's good, it must be good for you. That's what my mama always said. So there's this argument about what spells are appropriate for an arcane magic user and what spells, schools they come from, and whether or not milk has meth in it. <laughs> uh, this carries long into the night. Um, and about in the middle of the night, you two see a voluptuous blonde woman come strolling into uh, shenanigans. She immediately turns ahead of the very few people left in the, in the tavern itself, as it is now well into the night and many are sleeping. Ralph goes to take his hat off and realizes he doesn't have a hat, but then just kind of, oh, well. She takes a look around and spies Carter and wanders her way up to him, placing her hand on his shoulder, says, hey there, baby. I have some information for you. Did you see that? I, I nod my head. Uh, I take the two tankards of, of wine I already had prepared. Uh, and I look at the party members and we're going to sit around the same table. And then, okay, they can hear it as well. Okay, excellent. He said, you see, uh, it doesn't sound like he's faking it when it comes to the gold. Sounds like he's got quite a bit of it and willing to forge some weapons. They're getting made right now. As far as his intentions, and seems like a businessman to me. Seems. See, I told y'all he ain't had nothing to worry about. He's an honest and square little feller. He's just a little curious looking is all. Uh, he'll be great. He'll be great. No, let's go. I, my gold is burning a hole in my pocket. I, I look at Melissa and I say, well, I uh, did pay top coin for his entertainment, so I'm pretty sure that this information is good. She All looks right. at you after you say that. She says, I know you uh, paid for my whole night. Do you need any company? Uh, I kind of raise up uh, from the chair. I take a swipe bow at her and I say, no, thanks, ma'am. Please enjoy the rest of your free night. Well, she kind of looks you up and down, says, I guess that's my loss. And she kind of saunters her way back out of the, out of the bar. I, I sit down again. Well, that's my contribution to this. All right. Well, I guess we should get going. Well, in the morning, right? Let's go get a nap. All right. Okay. So I guess we'll see you for the night. Yes. I go to bed. Same. We'll set off with virtue and good intentions in the morning. Excellent. Night passes. You get up in the morning, and sure enough, there is Fritz at the at the front of shenanigans as you make your way downstairs. He's got his uh, very similar shirt on with his lacy cuff, and he smiles as he sees you all come down. Say, hey, "You're ready. You've taken care of your business. <laughs> you come." Uh huh. Yeah, Most know, definitely. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Little Fritzy. Was that your name, Fritzy? Fritz, yes, <laughs> Fritzy Wicks. <laughs> and my mother called me that. Well, you know, I never thought of goblins as having a mother, but I presume you must. Yes. Come, follow me. I will take you to the mountain. And uh, he begins waddling his way out of out of the tavern. Um, and he mounts himself onto a large mastiff. Um, that uh, looks way more like a big fat dog and it does a big powerful war horse. You think this one may have been spoiled quite a bit. Um, and he, he gets on a big saddle and, and he says, this will help me keep up with you long-legged folks. <laughs> and he begins riding off just expecting you to follow him. I uh, loosen the sword in my scabbard just a bit, uh, make sure the shield is where it's properly supposed to be. And I'll get Melissa and I say, I see what you mean though. I still don't really trust him. Yeah, I don't either. There's just something about a person with an orange face and small hands. I uh, I nod my head, uh, and she, you know, you hear the sound of like the long sword being in a ready position. All right, 
And you guys follow him through. He, he leads you outside of town on a, on a long, winding road through the forest. Uh, that, is, that is not essentially super well-traveled, but peasants do have to get from the Alardian Crest to Berkshire to sell their farms and crops. And you pass a, a, an occasional peasant a wandering by. Uh, they give an odd look to the caravan being led by a goblin and this very well-armed group of people and a peasant with a pitchfork. It, it's, it's very curious, but none of them seem willing to open their mouths and, and uh, you know, get in your way or, or, or maybe even get your attention at all and quite intimidated by the, the group, as weird as it is looking to them. Um, eventually, the road abruptly ends um, as you approach the Alardian Crest. Um, and, you know, there are farms scattered throughout here and farming land, uh, but this is also the open plains as well. Uh, and you begin walking your way through that straight west uh, towards where you guys know to be the uh, Great Horn Mountain and kind of a range of hills. Um, and we shall roll some stuff here for you. Hmm, very good. Uh, so about four hours of, of walking, you, you've begun to get yourself uh, mostly through the Alardian Crest and you are beginning to, to reach the end of the plains. You see the hills in, in sight and you see the Great Horn Mountain rising up into the, into the sky. Um, and you hear um, from the rumbling around you uh, a call of a large cat. <laughs> Um, and as you look to your right, um, you see two mountain lions slowly making their way down the plains towards you. Uh, they see that their tails laid back, ears flat, clearly in a hunting position. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 Carter, um, you want to go scare those critters off? <laughs> they look pretty dangerous. How many, how many are there? They're two. just kitties. <laughs> Those aren't fun kitties, Missy. Uh, the, the, them are real nasty, mean, flesh-eating, monstrous kitties. Uh, how many are there? There are two. Okay. Uh, are we on? <laughs> are we on a higher level than them, or are they like in the? You're world kind of up? in like a rolling plane. Um, you, the the difference in level is very marginal. Um, okay, cool. I was I was asking because we're close to mountains. You're yeah. You've yet to really reach them. Can I use survival woods or anything to try to get an idea about how strong and powerful they are, etc.? Basically, I'm kind of curious about how many hit dice they have. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, for, for, for spell purposes. Survival woods. All right. So does that go off of wisdom, I believe? Yes. Yeah. That was a good step. Nope. All right, so you, you, you spend your time going through your survival and, and you can't get anything really specific about their relative power. Um, you know that they're hunters and carnivores uh, that live in kind of the mountainous, maybe hill regions. You think they might be down here in the plains trying to hunt for food. Perhaps these are the hunters of their pack and they're going to bring it back for the weaker and the, and the more sickly. But uh, other than being formidable predators, you don't get much about that relative strength. Yeah. I uh, I have to I I oh sorry I have my nets out one well, my nets out and I look mm -hmm. at Moisa and I say should we we should definitely get them they're like small kitties except bigger but they are <clears throat> which one well, do you want. I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. And say, I like the one with the little white tuft of his tail. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this at him, and then you can go and try and make them friends. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna throw this at him, and I show him my harpoon. How is that gonna make them friendly? Just very sleepy. Uh, you guys just want to maybe kill him. <laughs> I uh, uh, man, that, those are mountain lions. Look, maybe you all grew up in a city and you don't realize the sort of danger we're in, but these things are are um 
You know, maybe it's time I cast one of my spells. I think I can get these mountain lions down for certain. If you guys don't want to take care of it, I'll take care of it. No, I uh, I nod my head and I say I'll help. Uh, and I, I do. Can I catch both my mountain lions with one net? Um, they seem to be rather close together right now as they're pawing their way slowly towards you. Um, they, they haven't yet broken into a charge yet. If you were to react quickly, you could maybe get them both. Um, with an accurate, okay. I, I would, I would uh, do it. Just out of curiosity, how do they react to the fact that I've got this great big elven dog right next to me? Uh, they seem to be not treating it any differently than the four of you at the moment. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I'm gonna roll my um, harpoon uh, net thingy. That's an eleven. Okay, uh, so you you break from the pack, run up, chuck your net at it. Um, with an eleven, <clears throat> you miss the mountain lions as you break up their ears perk up and you chuck the bolts to either side the the net doesn't catch either of them and then they begin bounding towards you i believe initiative will be in order cool one to ten uh sorry that's uh 17 on uh no 15 in my end uh, using All a right. long sword. Uh, I will... 15 for you. That's what is... 6. 12 for Ralph. Oh, yeah, 12 for Ralph. Um, I'm a bit more forward than them, so... Uh... I'm trying to tr uh, to keep the take the attention of the mountain lion so they attack me. Okay, are you trying yeah, to get I, their attention? I'm, uh, I'm making myself bigger, like with my with my sword and my shield. Like, Ugh. okay, absolutely. Um, and Melissa, what did you roll for initiative? Uh, it is rolling well, die four. How can that be? Oh, All right, because I have to. Yeah, because I've got the dex. Okay. Okay, yeah, well, you um, you win the initiative. Uh, you go first. Entangle. Okay. Uh, yep, they're, they, despite having split apart and bounding, they're still well within the range of an Entangle spell. Um, so they get saves against that, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one saves. It can move it 10 feet from out. Uh, so one of the mountain lions is immediately entangled in this in this wrap of vines. Uh, it, it can't move. It's it's, <laughs> but it's stuck in place. The other one, it it gets grabbed, but it keeps breaking through them, and, and it keeps rushing forward. Uh, okay. All right. Is there anything else you want to do with your turn? Uh, that that's probably all I could do with my turn. Okay. Sounds good. So you cast your initiative, um, Ralph. You are moving essentially at the same time as the as the lioness does, or as the uh, uh, mountain lion does. Uh, Ralph is holding his position and readying an action for a mountain lion to get near him. He's defending. Ralph is a like a four HP wizard. So you set yourself a pitchfork in hand. The mountain lion comes racing towards Carter, who is making himself a big. Uh, uh, target to step forward, um, and it comes racing up to uh, attack at you. Um, first, with its two claws, trying to um, beat you down. Um, with a nope, its claws ineffective, slashing at your your armor. It just it can't break through. It comes down with its its big bite attack. Um, and it's just, it makes no, you bat it away at every turn um, and knock it back against the ground. Um, and it becomes your turn, Carter. I will slash at the face of this creature uh, with my long sword. Okay. Uh, give me a second. Uh, that is four. There we go. That's a 13. Uh, 13. You, you slash down at this creature, and just before you're, you know your longsword is going to make contact, it dances to the side, and you end up striking empty air just at the last moment. Uh, oh, um, 
Fast question. Uh, fast question. Uh, I have two slots of proficiency in longsword. Or do I? Have, does that mean I get a second you attack? Specialize, so you get two attacks every three rounds, and you get plus okay. one to hit, plus two to damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Cool. Okay. That's uh, that's the end of my turn. I'm um, still gonna stand there with my longsword in hand and shield. Okay, excellent. Uh, so the uh, the goblin Fritz cowers uh, behind the party uh, and and gives encouragement. Kill it! Violence! Lots of violence! Kill these creatures! Um, and then it's time to roll initiative again. Um, I'm actually just going to continue to hold my action. Ralph is uh, terrified of these mountain okay. lions. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Carter and Melissa. Gonna see the. Uh, I have a seven. I've already rolled hmm. it. A seven for Carter. Okay, I didn't see yep. it. So what if the spell I? What do I add to my initiative? The spell I want to cast takes an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you are gonna be sitting here casting a very long time. <laughs> are you? Are you really trying to cast an hour-long spell? <laughs> what spell are you um, trying to cast? I think you're just essentially out of the initiative. I want to like, like you're you're just you're just casting this hour long spell at this point. What are you what are you casting? Animal friendship <laughs> for an hour. The casting time is one hour. Which um, one do you target? Um yeah yeah uh, yeah. I don't even need you to roll. Uh, you see you see Melissa begin into a trance um, and begins murmuring arcane spells under her breath and and weaving religious uh, gestures in the air filled with the power of nature and 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 magic uh, and and just continues to do this throughout the combat. Yeah, and I'm doing that at the um, the one attacking um, Carter before before I cast. I shot. Careful, Carter! You're gonna hurt it. <laughs> and then I, and I yell. Um, I yell at Virtue. Guard Ralph in case anything happens, and then I'll start casting the spell. And it should, if it if it doesn't pass its saving throw, it should immediately calm it down. In an hour. Uh, no, right no, away. It immediately calms it down. Yeah. So by means of the spell, the caster is able. Blah 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 blah. If the animal does not roll a successful saving throw over a spell immediately when the spell is begun, it stands quietly while the caster finishes the spell. All right. Um, saving throw versus spell for it. Uh, it fails. Um, so uh, you you do this. Um, you you hear all the things that have been said. The the magic spells uh, begin happening. Um, but before its turn. Uh, Carter, you have this mountain lion that is just danced out of the way of your blade, and you have one initiative. Uh, okay, so if it's targeting the one in front of me, I'm going to switch around and attack the other one. The okay. other one's in the middle of the entangle. Yeah, please save versus spell. Yeah, I'm not going to go. Uh, I'm going to just use the harpoon. I'm going to attack it with a harpoon. So that's a plus okay. two to initiative, just so you know. Uh, plus two from initiative, you would still win it. Yeah. Cool. Now, okay, I'm throwing right now. Thirteen. Do I get any advantage? Um, you do. It right is thing. essentially right. held, um, and it is not prone on the ground. So I'll give you a plus two to that. And you do. Your harpoon flies true, um, striking the um, held mountain lion in the in the torso. Uh, who's rolled damage? Right now. Ooh. You have the damage. Very nice. Um, your, your harpoon sinks deeply into it. Uh, blood begins pouring freely. It, it doesn't die, but it struggles weaken. Um, and, and instead of the, the vicious <laughs> it had been producing, it, it comes into this like pained howl, kind of low and guttural in its mouth, um, as, as uh, you've clearly very much hurt this creature. Um, then the, the, the single mountain lion is standing in front of you kind of sits down um, as a cat does, and perks its head looking at you, uh, Melissa, as you do your incantations. Um, and just kind of... And... and see, you're a good kitty. When I see the mountain lion has come to a stop in front of Melissa, and she's still casting a spell, Ralph will spring to action and Wait, try it's to... Wait, it's not in front of Melissa. It's in front of me, and I step next to it. Seeing the mountain lion coming to a stop. But it's staring at Melissa. 
Yeah. Casting a spell. Seeing the, the mountain line come to a stop, and Melissa, you no, know, off in her own world, Ralph will spring to action and save Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is <laughs> not happy about this. If he does, if he fails the attack, I'm gonna warn him, like, don't attack her, but, like, I don't uh, know that he's doing this. Maybe uh, plus one for flanking? I don't know if he plus does anything else. Plus one for else. flanking, absolutely. Um, this thing's really not even defending itself, so I'm gonna give you a plus two just for, like, it not trying to dodge or escape. Twelve. A twelve does not strike the mountain lion. Somehow, some way, oh, God, whoa. Your, your peasantry, you oh. are unable to stably push the pitchfork, and it goes wide, <laughs> and the mountain lion just can't notice over the incantations that Melissa is. is I put bringing. my, uh, I put my shield, kind of my shield on as, as I'm sitting like this, like the harpoon in the sand. I put my shield on in front of the mountain lion. And I look at him and it's like, don't attack it. She's doing magic to it. It's going to eat her. I, I shake my head. It's not moving. I was fighting it and then it turned very calm. Well, it's look magic. at Wow, I'll be damned. That is a crafty little spell. I wonder how she does that. I nod my head and then I prepare to throw another harpoon at the other one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, th throw away. You have two of them now, so... No, I have actually four of them in total. Oh, you have four? Yeah, I bought an extra one for another reason. There you go. Um, there we go, 13. You rolled a 13, uh, plus it's being held. Did you account for that? No, it looks like the same roll you did previously. That hits. Yeah, it's okay. a 16. I said 16 to hit and 13 to damage. Oh, a 16 to hit and a 13 to damage. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Your harpoon strikes true, taking the, the mountain lion in his exposed throat. Um, mm -hmm. And you hear the last final gurgle um, as, it, as it bleeds out. I and checked the one. Grasping vines. I checked the one that's calm. Does it have the red tuft on, on its tail? Um, it does have a tuft on its tail, yes. Is it wet? Um, Sure. I look back at Morris and I say, this is the one you like, right? Mm-hmm. I nod my head and I uh, gently put a uh, net on it and I kind of, I use my skill. No, it's fine. I, I just put a net on it just to like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I look at my and I'm like, yeah, 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 of course, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tighten the, the thing. Just to make okay. sure that you, know, you, you gently <laughs> place your net in a in a as friendly a way as you can over this this large cat that's enraptured by the spell. Yes. Um, please give me a wisdom check uh, or animal handling if you have it um, for I, this uh, action. Okay, I'll give you animal handling. Uh, so animal, I'll give you wisdom check. Don't have animal handling. Oh, sorry, that was that was a uh, twist chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, that's another seventeen. That's the third seventeen in a row on a skill shot that I've thrown. Yeah, you, you're very, you're very gentle in your placing of the net, and uh, you you get it right over the creature, and it doesn't even seem to break its concentration on Melissa's spell casting. Um, and you get the net just around it the way exactly you want, um, feeling very secure in, in, in the net's placement. Cool. Uh, just so you know, I think uh, tightening is an additional action, so I can't do it. I'm going to do it afterwards, which means that if the creature attempts to escape, I think we're only going to pose strength check. Okay, sounds like a plan. So you've you have slain a a mountain lioness, and you have one under enrapturement. As 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 Melissa's uh, great incantation continues and continues. What are the three of you doing? Scouting around, make sure there's no others. I am studying Melissa, trying to understand the words that she is saying. I know she uses a different form of magic. Ralph, Ralph understands there's a difference between arcane and divine magic. Uh huh. But her pronunciation is so perfect, and she just keeps chanting for like an hour. How the hell does she get this spell? This is certainly something interesting. Wow, what the All hell? Right. You know, he's really so, intent on So that. I would have a perception check from Carter as he scouts around, um, carefully checking for any more of these creatures, and a spellcraft check from Neil, uh, from 
Ralph. Uh, okay. I don't have a spellcraft proficiency, so at minus five? Yes. Uh, I think the more you ask me for, for ability checks, the more I'm going to just hire. There you go. Um, you you run to the top of a hill and attain a sense of enlightenment as you view the plains. Um, and you, you can spot all of the forests and woodlands creatures, but uh, you, you spy no more of these. Is everything, is everything that the light touches mine? <laughs> yeah, everything <laughs> the light touches is yours. Except that shadowy area over there. There you must never go. That I, I head over towards the shadow area. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you, you spy no more uh, mountain lionesses. Or other great cats or predators. 28 on my unproficient spellcraft proficiency. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you, you spend some time understanding these words. And even though they are of a different type of magic, you still come eventually to kind of understand the general uh, spell. And you, you realize that his, his arcane energies are, are seeping into this animal and calming it and eventually perhaps twisting it towards friendship. Um, and you, you, you know that uh, perhaps similar magics may be attainable if you studied and uh, perhaps uh, did some research of your own into a way to make them more arcane. Um, but this is the essential spell being crafted and weaved. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So... As a, as a result, uh, eventually the entanglement passes. Um, the, the Fritz, the goblin next to you, gets a little antsy at some point during this hour of waiting. He says, come on, we're, we're so close. Why, why can't we just slay this beast while it is enraptured and be done with it? We have panda snatches. Yeah. Oh, hold on there, little critter. We're doing you a solid here, and uh, there is something interesting going on. Do you know what she's doing to that mountain lion? She's magically manipulating its brainwave patterns in order to make it be more amenable to the likes of us. God, I hope I use that word right. Amenable is the right word, right, Mr. Goblin? Uh, anywho, uh, she, she's doing something very fancy here. And, uh, you know, that this mountain lion creator might be of use to us in, in fighting a, a bandersnatch, right? Because, you know, you said it was about the size of a lion. And here we have our own lion. And so that should cancel it out, and uh, that should be real easy, like. This is, this is why, why do you have need of this creature? You have your, your own oh, little butt, as he points towards your, your elven dog, and then realizes it's bigger than him, and kind of, eh, and then he says, and you have the golden weapons. I say, get it! We're, we're wasting Cameron. time. This is magic. She does magic, you respect magic until magic is finished. I learned as a kid in tribe. If you disrespect magic, the shaman eats you. So you do not disrespect magic. I don't want to be uh, eaten. I, I don't know yeah. all about that, but uh, she ain't hurt nobody. And we can afford what? I don't know how long this is going to take, but we can afford a little extra time on the road, right? I, it's a waste of time. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Fine. Uh, I'm awful he, sorry. He, he, just, he pouts next to his, his large mastiff for a while. Well, h how about I give you my share of the the reward then? That make ma that make it fair? He says, "If you come back with treasure, yeah, sure, why not?" Ah, see, now we're all peachy. Peachy, yes. He frowns. I look at a goblin, I can whisper under my breath. Insulting shaman also means eat. What do you whisper? Um, insulting the shaman also means eat you. Oh, <laughs> he kind of looks at you and goes, yes, fine. And he just sits and waits. Uh, eventually, an hour passes. Your spell comes to conclusion. Um, does, it, does it need to save again, or is it just now your friend? It's now my friend, and it's permanent. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you have off the permanently um, found yourself a, a mountain lioness friend. At the end of the spell, it gets up and it pods its way over to you, Melissa, and it jumps up on its hind legs, puts its forward paws on you, and gives a big lick. <sighs> right on. I, she, I, I, I give, give it my sword. sword. Like, hey, everybody, this is Vespers. <laughs> Vespers. Mm-hmm. That is a uh, definitely an elven sort of name for a critter. 
I take out like a salted beef or something like from my rack, and I say, Vesper, here, and I pat my leg, and I, but my other hand is like steak. Uh, it, well, it pads over and, and it. Uh, well, what 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 uh, what does vespers mean in the common tongue? They're prayers in the common tongue. It's, his it's his not, name is Prayer. Oh wow! Yeah. Hey, prayers. How's it going? I wouldn't want to forget my prayers. <laughs> huh? Just, just let's go. Let's go. The road awaits. Maybe I should learn a few words of Elvin. Might be useful. All right. Whoa. And with that, the, with that, uh, Fritz hops back up onto his uh, mastiff, and he says, "Let's go. We're done wasting with this time." And he he tr begins trotting along on his on his mastiff westward once more. Okay, I follow along happily. Uh, Fr I, uh, Fritzy, how much farther until we get there? I'm getting real tired of walking. Another hour or so is fine. Along the way, I want to try and teach Vesper how to fetch. Okay. Um, as you're as you're like walking through the uh, the plains here and then the hills, and you're you're following along, you keep throwing food. And like, no, no, no! Like it's, it's, I'm throwing like a bone, and this is this bone always bring the bring the bone back. You, you you keep throwing it out there, and and you keep trying to get it to retrieve it, but it's it's just a long process. It, you don't need to get a lot of results out of it. Uh, it seems the the process of traveling and and the following and the just newfound friendship it has with the party, uh, you don't seem to make much headway towards teaching it to fetch. It's okay. I didn't expect it to happen. Now I'm just starting it. Now I'm starting her training. I don't to... you, you you give it a good old college try, um, and uh, it it's you're you're planting the roots. Um, I bet more... she'll get it after one week. <laughs> I yeah. bet so too. I look at Morris and I say, "We used to train bears, not very similar to lions, but I think I can do this." Very good. So after about an hour's worth of travel through the hills, you get to essentially the base of the Great Horn Mountain. And as you are descending down a large hill, uh, you see rising in front of you uh, a small city uh, that is peasant folk and hill people. Uh, you see mostly humans um, and a few goblins running around as well, just in the in the streets. And rising dramatically behind it, um, on adorned on the foot of the mountain itself, is a abandoned looking castle. Its walls crumbling in places, but the keep still is tall, and there are um, towers uh, along the walls. Um, and it is in generally ominous, just looking. It is dark and and shadows of the mountain and the castle itself spread over this this town. Um, you begin your descent downwards, and Fritz says, "That's very good. Welcome, welcome to the town of Tempion. It's very nice here. I'll take you to my shop, and we'll get your weapons in no time." And he pads uh, you through. The uh, as, as we go to the shop, I'm gonna keep an eye out for. A other types of shops, uh, whatever shops I can see along the way, just let me know. Do, sure. Is um, this a, a purely goblin village? Mostly human. Uh, I would say, like, if you're taking a look around and you're you're looking through it, you would say that uh, about eighty percent of this is human, about twenty percent goblin. Okay. Um, and uh, as you as you're padding along the streets, uh, you look around for for shops and whatnot. Um, mostly, you you see um, like animal part shops, right? You'll see things like um, a tannery for hides, and you'll see like oh look, we have the finest like owl oils and fish oils and you know oils of all kinds of different animals and you have hides and you have oh do, do you have baby oil i'm sorry baby oil oh indeed we we do have baby oil although it's not our, our uh, best selling item is, is it human baby oil or goblin baby oil well I, I believe you could use it for either type of baby yes oh so it's not made from babies oh of course it is 
No, I'm just kidding. We just say that sometimes. The 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 uh, baby oil is is of course made of canola. Oh, oh, good. My my feet get real dry. I could use it to. I got these big blisters on my legs, on on my feetsies, and I I gotta rub in the baby oil to to soothe it. Well, you know what you could try is our oil. It's very fine. It'll seep right into the cracks, congeal them up nice. Made out of the finest tawny owls. Oh, that sounds great. A file of it for a silver piece. Well, I first thought you said aloe oil, but this is owl oil. This is owl, like tawny like, owls. Hoo -hoo, tawny owls. Yes. Uh, th those aren't the endangered ones, are they? Very much so. Well, I guess I, I guess I better get the oil while it's still around then. <laughs> How much for some owl oil? Uh, one one silver piece of oil. All right, I give him a silver, and then I rub the owl oil all over my feet. It's very nice. Your your feet stink like all hell. It's it's disgusting smelling, but it's soothing. Well, that's and, how you know it's working. Hold your feet as you walk. Yeah. Um. I um. I kind of like as he comes closer to me, I kind of poke up. I smell, I smell owl piss. <laughs> oh, no, it's not owl piss, it's owl oil. It's essential oils from an owl, a, a tawny owl. There ain't many of them left. It's a good thing I got it, and a good deal, too. Only a silver for a vial. I kind of whisper under my breath to Marissa, owl piss. <laughs> All right, so you were led past these shops, and, and, and Carter, you're on the lookout, but you don't see anything particularly, like, adventure useful. It's very, very similar to these types of shops. Um, but you get the impression that the town here is very poor, um, just in general. Um, and, but you are led to one of the two largest buildings in the town, um, and sure enough, it says, Fritzy's Collectibles and Arms. And you see it's just a large two-story shop in pretty good repair. It uh, seems like this is definitely a step above the rest of the uh, places in town. Uh, Fritzy opens the door, um, lets his, his mastiff go, and it plods over to a big bed. You see rows and rows of different types of um, just goods. There's all kinds of weird collectibles and strange things. There's stuffed cadavers, there's oils and incenses and other things. But along the far wall, you see nothing but what look like arms and armor of all kinds of various kinds. They are um, wrapped up in in like really done in leather. It looks almost like refurbished arms, like things that have been used, but have been like remade and taken very good care of. They're all very clean and sparkly. And he, he looks up to you, says, ah, yes, welcome to my shop here. <laughs> this is where I have stored the golden weapons for you. And um, do you have a, a, a golden pitchfork? I, I had just the thing handmade while we were waiting. And he's um, like, I, 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 my boy, scrambling over here last night while you were taking care of things. I like to inspect the weapons as we get them. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, he, he goes behind a, a big desk and he pulls out large briefcases and he begins opening them up. Um, and sure enough, in, in them, as he, he opens up kind of like big luggage cases, uh, there are duplicates of all of your weapons. Uh, there's a big shiny pitchfork, beautifully made of gold, just like bright and, and, and shiny, and he, he hands it to you. And uh, he, there's, a, there's many harpoons and a long sword, uh, and, and he hands them all to you. He says, look, they're I don't exchange. Um, I don't exchange all of my weapons. Um, um, my two harpoons, two of my harpoons are stashed away in a cloth. Uh, I exchange two harpoons for that, um, and that's it. I don't take the long sword. I only take two harpoons because I was supposed to give them back, give them the bronze weapons. Yeah, I'm only gonna give get two golden harpoons. Okay. Um, we, when he hands them out, he says, "You'll be wanting that long sword too, I'm sure. You want all the weapons you can for the bandit snatch." I shake my head. Are I'm good. Sure? I, have, I have a beautiful golden long sword for you. I'm, I'm sure you'll want it. I'm good. Um, but first, before we, I do say any of this, I do want to inspect them. Sure. Um, because I feel like, like I want to see like are these actual gold or are these like just uh, blown over gold? 
Sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. You're, you have a blacksmithing proficiency. Go ahead and make that check. Cool. Thank you. There we go. Um, as he hands you the golden harpoons, you, you take a look at them, kind of give them a swing. You test their, their bend. You, you give them a good bite. Um, and, and you are pretty, pretty sure that these are freshly crafted golden weapons. I nod my head. Uh, I look at the others and I say, I, I just kind of look at um, Larf and Moise and say, do whatever you guys want. I'm done here. He says, ah, no, no, you're not. Stay, stay here for a second. We need to do the terms of this a little bit. See, I'm, I'm giving you valuable golden weapons. You, you, you can say, you've checked them out yourself. They're incredibly valuable. Normally, I would have to sell these at over 2,000 gold pieces, but you're doing me a favor by bringing me my skull. So, I will take as collateral all of your weapons. Now... <laughs> okay. I hand him my pitchfork. Right. He, he takes that. He says, excellent. And, and you have your golden pitchfork. And I give, me, I give, him, I give him my gold, uh, long sword. You do not need take of the golden long sword, but I need something as collateral. I am giving you a fair bit of wealth. Um, and I am certain of your success, but I can't be too, I can't be too generous. I haven't made this name for myself by being that... Ah, foolish is to not take collateral when it's available. So I'll be needing all of your weapons. Um, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of snickering a bit, uh, and I turn around, kind of try and stop the snickering, and I give them the wrong sword, and I take the gold or wrong sword then. Okay. And I say, yeah, that's it. Okay. Of course, I don't give them the hidden weapons. Sure. So since since you're actively like hiding the weapons from them that you've yeah. wrapped up yeah. in your cloth, should I do a dexterity check? Please do. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I get some bonus for the fact that I have enough time to properly prepare. Absolutely. Um, I will give you a plus three bonus for the, the time you spent uh, uh, wrapping them up. That's still a 23. Yep. That's still a 23. Uh, he, he gives you a once over since you've, you've kind of been a little hesitant to hand over your stuff. Um, but you, you uh, passed well enough with your with your wrapping and your and your hiding in the cloth he kind of gives it a, a quick look but dismisses it as probably just your supplies or your pack um and doesn't look or he, he looks at you melissa and and has you give over whatever weapons are on your person no i'm not giving up consequences i don't need a gold weapon i fight with consequences then i need your weapons as as collateral for your friends their weapons mm -hmm. alone wouldn't be enough to cover it oh no, I well, I'm, no. I don't give up consequences. I don't want the gold weapon. If they, if you want to take their weapons as collateral, for their I'll take yours thing. as well, sweetheart. Uh, no, you won't. Their weapons won't cover the full cost. Oh, the Mr. Fritzy, hey, she is one of the most honest people I've ever met in my life. She I, might be a little bit daft sometimes, but she is nothing but a pure-hearted individual. You can take her at her word. Uh, she might not I come back. I know that she is an honest and forthright person. I've never met. Uh, a Correct. woman wasn't, <laughs> but I'm gonna put the money for a long sword on the table, and she would know she would have to give up the collateral for this. Well, and well, I'm why would I have to give up my weapons if I'm not getting anything? See, because uh, you're saying is that if we all gave you all our weapons, then you would give us gold versions of our and weapons. And I would happily... But each person's my weapons must be enough collateral weapons. for their gold weapons. I think you just want us to give up our weapons. Uh, that's ridiculous. Here, why don't I give you like the 30 gold pieces, 29 gold, 9 silver, and 9 copper actually I have on me. Maybe that can be collateral instead of uh, her weapons. I, I, I've been trying to do this for like the, the past <laughs> a bit. Uh, just put the money for gold for like a sword's worth. You have that much? I have 35 gold. Isn't that enough? Wait, it's uh, not. He he sees the gold. And, and, is that a long sword worth? What's the? Well, how much is a long sword? Wait, you person? see, this isn't just a long sword, right? This is. He has a bunch of gold melted down into a sword. It is a long sword, literally made of gold. No, you don't get it. And putting this money for her sword, now you have the collateral that that would be worth. Make a charisma check. 
Cool. Well, Christmas is not that great. Mm. Ah, 24. Hey, okay. but you're the man today. He looks at you and he gives his, he, he pops his, his spiky goblin fingers together and looks Melissa up and down real slow. Fine, but I'll need the dog to stay. No. I don't want it getting hurt. Nope. I know. I'm staying here with my, with my pretty mastiff. I look at the goblin and I say, that dog would probably kill everybody in this room without blinking three times. I don't go anywhere without virtue. Virtue's always with me. He needs to be with us. He's probably going to help. You know, you need a bait. You need a... I kind of wink at Melissa kind of side-handedly. You need, you need bait to, like, attract the creature. That's going to be easier for us to ambush it and kill it on your behalf. Mm-hmm. Virtue here is faster than even a bandersnatch. Everybody knows how furiously fast they are. Well, virtue is even faster. If I if I'm still doing the same as much, I'm gonna try and kind of back him up on like, yes, elven dogs are incredibly fast. Back in tribe, if we see elven dog on the prowl, we don't even try and hunt it. Too fast. The and we, uh, hunt, and we hunt lions. Kind of sits there and looks between the three of you, and in an exasperated sigh, ah, so so be it. Fine, I'll take this gold and your weapons, and then. I was. This is this is uncouth, but I will accept this deal. Fine. And he hands out golden weapons that you would like for any of yours. Um, and uh, he says, "Follow me. I'll show you to the castle grounds." And along the way, he he kind of gives you the spiel of the Bandersnatch came about a month ago, and it's it's set up shop in the in the basement of this castle in the in the catacombs of it if you will there's mm-hmm. an ancient cave spent last time there's an entrance to them if you go through the main keep there's stairs will go up i don't know what's up there old people used to live in the castle but down if you go down there's a spiral staircase it'll lead you to the catacombs and down there is where the bandersnatch lives and it's where it keeps its treasure hoard i've been told i look at i look at him and I say, good, you stay here. We go take care of trouble. Sure. And, and, he, and, and he leads you to like the, the walls of the castle themselves as they go up to the very base of the mountain, just a few, you know, a few hundred yards outside of town. Um, and, and he nods his head and says, yes, you, you be on your way. I'll be waiting with baited breath at my, at my shop. I, I nod my head and um, kind of wait for him to leave. And I've got the, the party. And it, was there a blacksmith shop along the way up to his shop? No. There uh, was but no there was, forge if, of any kind. As you were looking, there was a blacksmithery. Like there was the items needed to be a blacksmith attached to his shop. Yeah, what well, I was saying, furnace and so on. Uh, okay. I've got a party and I say, this crap is actually gold. I expected it to be fake. You. I'm still not convinced that it's not fool's gold. There was a really embarrassing incident that happened at Madame Farrandeer's school for Elven Girls Prom where somebody did some fool's golding and it turned out that the gold on the prom dress wasn't really gold and it was, it was just a nightmare. I um I take out the small sack out of my back and I take over the two harpoons. Um, make sure you have one strapped to me and then I give one to Rolf. Uh, just if that guy was full of it, have this. That's the pitchfork isn't actually gonna do damage if the creature isn't immune. Is it? Uh, bleh. Doesn't have any vulnerabilities to gold. Rolf. Ralph? Mm-hmm. Sorry, Ralph was distracted by something else. What was the question? No problem. I, I, gave you the, I gave you one of the harpoons I had hidden and basically said, if this guy was lying, just in any case, have a normal weapon on you. Sure, I don't have a way to hide a harpoon. 
No, you don't need to. Like, now you can use it in the open because we're not. He's okay. not there anymore. Right, but I'm just yeah. being very clear here. Ralph has like, you know, his clothes and a backpack and his That's golden a, yeah, pitchfork. It's, it's yeah. Don't cool. worry about it. Like, just keep that weapon on you if you need it. Okay, I'm gonna say so. I'm gonna try and uh, kill this thing. If it doesn't work, we just disappear. I guess we tried. I smile. At least I'm gonna disappear. I kind of think that maybe we should, you know, since he's gone now, ask somebody else in the town what they think about Fritz. I mean, it just seems like we went through a whole town of people that might tell us, oh, he's really bad news. And, you know, we didn't really get to ask because he was with us. But I kind of feel like what? that would be a thing we should ask. See, this is why this like, is why you're the kind of person one. who puts meth and milk Y'all are super suspicious. I think he really just wanted us to go down into this here dungeon and get this thingy. I mean, well, why else would he... I mean, look, if you guys want to go talk to the village, let's just go talk to the village. Let's just get it out of the way. You know, make sure it's the way that it ought to be. Uh, let's okay, go cool. find a random villager, I think, right? I, I, I think we should. Because right. when somebody is sending you off to fight a monster and they emphasize they'll be waiting with bated breath. I feel like that might be their clever way of saying that you're really the bait, but they don't think they're saying it, or they don't think you know they're saying it, but they think they're really smart because they're saying it. I look at Moisa and I say, yeah, that's a good point. And also, Alf, do you know how much this shit is worth? I point out to the two harpoons, the roto harpoons and the sword. This is about... It's a 7,000 gold, more gold that you've seen in a whole life. Yeah, so our weapons as collateral would be really lame. I mean, might as well not have that for collateral. I think he just wanted us to not have weapons. Well, then why would he give us golden weapons? Because he's going to get them back after from our corpses. And on my head. That seems overly convoluted. It's like having sharks with laser beams on their heads. It, you know, you, you don't need something that complicated to kill a person. I think the, the complications of this quest only make it more real. But but if you insist, we can go and ask. Let, why don't we agree we'll ask three fellas? And uh, if two out of the three say he's all right, then we'll, we'll go ahead. See, sometimes it's not with certain kinds of orange people. It's more about their ego than about something that makes sense. For example, one orange person that I met who wasn't very good, he kept going on about what a great businessman he was, even though he inherited a bunch of money. And it turned out that if he had just taken the money he inherited and put it in um, index funds, and not built any hotels, casinos, he would have had three times as much money as he actually had after building all kinds of casinos and things. So it turns out that if he had done nothing, he would be richer than he was. You for know, doing I, I think I heard that same thing, but I also think that was an oversimplification and uh, used uh, cherry picked data out of specific situations. And while I agree with the premise that not all orange people are wonderful, I think this individual anecdote might not hold water. Mm, but I agree maybe. with your your greater premise. But let's go talk to some folks, all right? Let's go talk to a couple of folks. Yes, let's talk to some Let, folks. Let's talk to some folks. <laughs> all right, hmm. so you make your way back towards town in a few hundred yards. Is there a tavern? Um, are you just going to go talk to the first random person you see on the street? I think the tavern might be a good place because there would be yep. a lot of people. Yeah, sure, let's let's pick sure. some people from different so areas though. Let's grab um, one from a tavern, one from the street, and then I don't, you know, a f third from wherever. What other um, what other shops did I see around, Greg? Uh, so for the most part, what you saw was as explained, like lots of like tanneries, animal parts. Like <clears throat> this is where like hunters would bring their their creatures to have them disassembled. Um, the other like shops would be a legit like inn like where people would stay for the night and then across the street, a bar um, called McTwisties. Um, cool. Um, I'm going to look at Melissa and um, uh, Ralph and say, you guys do that. I'll be right back. 
And I want to check the bar uh, and then the end for any wandering traveler, peddler, or merchant of any kind. Mm, okay, so you go into the bar uh, and you take a look around. Uh, go ahead and give me a, a perception check as you do. Coolio. Okay. Me too. Uh, you search around the bar, um, and sure enough, as, as you look around, you see the weather-worn and beaten-down human and goblin faces that kind of seem all very local, um, with the exception of a single uh, elven traveler um, with its hood up. At first, you didn't even really notice it was elven, but as you looked around, you saw the pointed tips of its ears just kind of point its way out at a arm, and you... <clears throat> notice they are sitting there with a single bow across their back, sipping a, a, a drink in the corner uh, alone. I um um I go to a bar, ask uh for. Oh, by the way, how many? How much money did I put down for a wrong sword? How much is a wrong sword? You worth? said you said thirty five, so that's what I assumed. I had well, that was my whole money. I was only gonna oh. put like how much is worth for a wrong sword. I'll look. I'll look it up for you. Cool. I'm guessing it's not going to be a full 25, so I'm just sure. going to buy the guy a drink, uh, whatever he's drinking, and myself a beer, and head over to his table. Sure. Uh, the the bartender says, "Oh yeah, he's uh, he's drinking a a nice ale. I'll get you one too." And uh, he he hands you two for like a couple pieces of copper. It's not it's not expensive here, McTwisties. Okay, then um, then I'm gonna ask for whatever he has in the form of expensive wine. Then McTwisties, I love that name. All right. Well, uh, in terms of wine, we've got red and we got white. Red, red it is. Uh, it, it only costs like another extra copper piece each. Um, and he cool. he he originally poured it in a in like a mug and then shook his head and he rummaged around underneath the bar for a while and then he pulled out like a little glass. And then he poured the wine from the ale mug into the glass. Um, and then I just poured water on my computer because I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> and he hands the, the glass to you. Uh, and, and you now have two, two uh, wine glasses. I uh, will um, go towards the man. And as I approach him, I'm going to kind of very formal pose again. Small uh -huh. bow and say, greetings, Trevor. The, the elf looks up to you and says, Greetings. I put down the two drinks. I hope I have not been um, an opportunist to buy you a drink. No, I, I appreciate anyone that'll buy me a drink. You want to sit down and have a chat? Not very down. many people buy a drink and leave. Uh, yeah, I sit down and I uh, nod my head. Thank you. Tell me, stranger, what, what prompted you to buy me a glass of wine? Uh, can you repeat that? I what, didn't get it. What prompted you to buy me a glass of wine? I take out one of the golden harpoons and put it on the table. He looks at it, says, that looks very fancy. Well, it's very fancy, but like useless for a weapon in general. And I um, kind of just drink with him and I explain to him the situation. Uh, and I'm basically like, I'm looking to sell this. Would he be interested in buying he he shakes his head. He says, "I'm a traveler. I don't, I don't carry that kind of coin around. Uh, unfortunately, it, it's a beautiful piece. I wouldn't mind owning it. You, you might want to look for a, a, a noble or someone that has, you know, a couple thousand coin they can just spend on a beautiful piece like that. <laughs> I'm more of a, a bow wielder myself, anyway. Well, you know what." I think I have just just the idea for the two of us. What do you say to a little business deal? He he's he kind of strokes his chin and says, "I'm listening." You know Berkshire. Of course, yes. Good. Hire a peddler boy and a horse. I'll provide a coin for that. You send a package back to. And shenanigans to the bartender. You want That's me to, to take the, the harpoon to shenanigans? I nod my head. Whatever. Whatever Desmond says it's worth. 
You can get 10%. I'm not much of a trader, but seems like I a pretty... Explain, no, to him in blacksmithing, like, criteria how much this would be worth. Uh-huh. He kind of, he nods his head as you, as you tell him and says, <clears throat> Oh, I, sounds like good money to me. I'd be happy to do it. 10%, you say? How, uh, will you be waiting here when, when I... I will be, I will be coming back. So I'll meet you in shenanigans. Are you sure... I'm not wanted. He, he kind of, he kind of gives you an odd look and he says, If you're returning to shenanigans and you want me to sell this in shenanigans, why do you need me? I fear that uh, there's going to be some uh, complications in this town, so there's going to hold me some time here. And until I finish with that, I wish business to be uh, protracted faster. He nods his head a little bit, says, I think there's something you're not telling me, but that's fine. I'll take 10% of whatever this is worth. That's good money right there. And uh, he'll he'll wrap it up. Um, and I would like to do a... Inside check, if at all possible, just trying to see if he is. Uh, Tui doesn't really have an insight, but uh, sure, why not? Give me some wisdom if you would like to. Yeah, yeah, it's just something like that. I, I want to gauge his kind of level of um, honesty. Like, is he? Does he have like thirty-one? There we go, another seventeen. You you take a look over him. <clears throat> This 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 elf doesn't look like a, a true criminal to you. You think that the possibility of him absconding with your giant gold harpoon seems low, especially since as you look him over, he, he kind of is very wary of you, seems a little intimidated by your half-orc presence. But you're not entire if if he sells this for coin, you're not entirely sure he wouldn't pocket some extra. Yeah. Yeah, okay with me. Uh, this is more of an ask than to get one type of deal. Uh, uh, cool, I put it, I, I, I make the contract, I guess, how much gold was the long sword? Have you checked? Oh, 15 gold, perfect. So I'll give him 10 gold from the journey. Okay. And uh, he, that's, he pockets that's that. And uh, we'll, we'll wrap up the, the harpoon in a, in a nice uh, blanket. Uh, like he's just pulled it out of his bag. Um, he slings it over his shoulder. He he uh, gives a signal like you know, nice check over to the to the bartender. Throws some coins at him and and immediately. Um, would I know if Desmond spoke any? Oh, I know some. Um, I'm gonna write a fast letter. I do have uh, writing and reading. Uh, a fast letter and uh, in it in Orkish, I will write. Uh, no, sorry. In common at first, I will write. Um, if Desmond, if they, if Desmond, if you Desmond can't read this, give it to your cook. And then I write in Orkish. <laughs> if if this uh, letter was open, this guy is got, probably gonna lie to you. His the deal I made for him is ten percent of whatever you can sell this weapon to. If he's lying, he gets nothing. And then I fold the letter. I tried with the bow. Um, Kind of seal wax from I guess I pay for a seal wax. I'm guessing they have one at the bar or something. Sure. Yeah. Like uh, there's someone takes a candle over and like dumps some of the wax out of it onto it, and you can smush it down with a ring or something if you have one. Yeah. Whatever. And just give it to him. Sure. This, Excellent. This sort of thing. Give it to the bartender. All right. To the bartender. I can do that. And uh, he 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 heads off with you. Cool. Um. And then I'll join the party. Whatever they're doing. Okay, what have you two been up to? I'm just kind of hanging out. I had no questions. I was ready to walk out, so I'm just waiting for these guys to decide whether or not. Um, Melissa? The, yeah. So I'm going to first go to the bartender, and I'll get a um, order. Uh, Welcome to McTwisties. What can I do for you? Um, where, where do you get your milk? I... Uh, Cows, occasionally goats. Like, do you have your own cow, or do you get it from somebody uh, else? I don't, I don't own a cow. There's there's farmers out in the Elardian Crest. They sometimes come through with dairy, and I occasionally buy some. It's good for these uh, white Russians that we make. Would you like one of those? No. Um, well, I, I guess if you could make it a white Russian but hold the Russian... Hold the Russian. Are you one of those 
queer non-drinking folk? No, just a regular straight non-drinking folk. He eyes you funny. Uh, let me know when I appear. Lights over a middle. You probably you're probably done with your conversation, and you you kind of as you've as you've brossed your your letter off, you see Melissa at the bar getting a glass of milk slid over to her. Okay, so how much is that for you? Three copper. Okay, I'll slide over a silver. He takes it, counts back, change. It's like no, uh, go so go I ahead and, and keep it. He snatches it back. Okay. Uh, you know, I I was curious. I was thinking about buying a weapon, and I know there's that Fritz has a shop, but it seems like his stuff is all used instead of newly made, and he seems, I don't know. I It was hard to get a good read on him. What, what can you tell me about Fritz? He displays the refurbished stuff because if he can sell that to you, he gets a higher price. The, the freshly made and blacksmith stuff is usually custom order or at the very least in the back room. Is if you he, want a weapon, he's the man, though. He has all the weapons. He might he, be gouged on the price a bit, but who doesn't these days? Is he reliable or trustworthy? Uh, as far as I know. I, I don't have a lot of weapons. Appear b- behind Moessa. Um, I say, ah, oh, my friend. Oh, also, I need to mention something. Uh, I don't know, Greg. Uh, it is a half orc with 18 strength, and she show he shows it. So, okay. like, comes comes behind Moessa. Moessa, my friend. Oh, I hope you're having a very good conversation with this honest barkeep. The the yeah. bartender kind of looks at you. He's like, you're friends with this queer little lady here. Okay. She is my protege. Your protege? She's very dear to me. That's that's good, that's good. Uh, does she want wine too? No, she wanted milk, hold the Russian. Has, has Fritz ever mentioned wanting to destroy the world with an apocalypse skull or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. No, I haven't trying- heard anyone. I haven't heard anyone trying to destroy the world around here in my lifetime. Or maybe a skull that does other things. Are you, are you talking about the family skull? Uh, it's been gone. I don't know how long. I, I a long it. time. No, oh, indeed, recently. Indeed. His his father's father's father had a skull with red crystals in its eyes, and it was made of inlaid silver and gold runes. It was very expensive looking. Oh, uh, was it magical? I have no idea. I don't do magic. I do beer. If you drink enough, anything's magical. When did it get lost, the skull? Uh, I, I, there's only stories about it in town. I, I, it, it hasn't been seen in ages. In ages, you say, not just recently. What, what are some of the stories about it? That it's expensive and that Fritz's family owns it. <laughs> but did he ever own it or like his father lost it or? I, no one's seen it in a long time. Now, if it got lost, which is very likely, because if you, if you own such an item, you would display it, of course. It's a, quite a thing. It's what you wealthy people do. That and drink milk. But uh, it, it hasn't been seen since his father's father's father had it. Oh. So it wasn't stolen in the recent Bandersnatch invasion? Mm, no, maybe. It, it, I, I don't know. I don't know when it got lost. I haven't seen it. But is there is a Bandersnatch in the castle? Uh, something lives in the basement, yes. It's been raiding the town every now and then, stealing our goods. How come nobody lives in the castle? No one's lived in the castle as long as I remember. It's been an abandoned castle for centuries at least, I'm sure. How come it's abandoned? I mean, a castle is a pretty nice place. It's all crumbling and falling down. It's more work than, than we can afford to do to make it livable and hospitable. Otherwise, the cold of the winters and the mountains will freeze your ass right off when you're living in it. All right. Ralph taps his fingers on the Thank table. Thank you for your information. Uh, uh, how, how many people is that we've asked? Just just the one? 
Actually, just one more question. Do like groups of adventurers ever come through here? I mean, I think they normally come to, to bars. So you would probably know them. I've seen a few adventurers come through here. Yeah, there was just an elf. Well, he's gone now. Had a bow on his back. Uh, sometimes they stop over at Fritzy's to uh, get weapons or whatnot. Uh, sometimes I've, I've had a few of them try to go after the Bandersnatch. None have really come back yet. Hmm. But do they tend to go over to Fritzy's and he like maybe he recruited them or stuff? I don't know. I'm not in Fritzy's business. Hmm. Unless he wants beer, then he's in ter- then he's encroaching on my turf, and we'll have to have a talking. Ralph leans in, kind of taps Melissa on the shoulder, and goes, uh, "Ma'am, I, I I really hate to say this, but I, I think I told you so. I think I've been telling you so for a couple of days now. That this guy's on the level. He's a great dude. Let's just go kill this banner He lied to us about the skull, which has been gone for generations." I hate, no one said generations. No one it. said generations. He said, said it was ages. Like grandfather's time. That's generations. That's the last time we saw it. But I mean, maybe they're just all fools that took it off display. Well, In you know, my opinion, it would be lost because if if you didn't lose it, then why wouldn't you display it? You know, what one little inconsistency in a person's story does not make them a monster. I lied to you about where I got my goat, uh, my my donkeys. I didn't tell you that. You monster! I did. I didn't tell you the first time we met that Henry's my my father and that Wimbley is just some normal donkey. But uh, you, you know, double monster. Oh, it was an accident. I, I I told you eventually about it all, but you know, it took me a little while to work up the nerve. And so occasionally people tell white lies. It's a it's a little lie. And maybe he just forgot. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure this place is just as dangerous as he says it is, and not a bit more. I thought, why would he come all the way to shenanigans and then give us golden weapons and come all... Doesn't that just seem like a lot of trouble to, what, get a couple of people killed? Don't you think there could be a more convincing basic story he could get to get people down there? I think we're okay. Let's just go kill this thing. (sighs) All right. Smile and look, Melissa... Nonetheless, um, the weapons, well, let's just say when we return to shenanigans, there's going to be a lot of gold waiting for us. And I smile. All right. But, Ralph, if our souls get fed to an apocalypse skull, I'm going to haunt you. Provided that's doable after your soul has been absorbed, which I'm not sure. (laughs) Okay, okay. Uh, I kind of wi- I kind of whisper to um, uh, to Morissa as we go out. Just I, I I would like to try and catch Morissa in one on one as we're moving out. Um, I think that's probably possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can at least whisper in her ear. Yeah, just mm-hmm. uh, Morissa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I explain actually, to I think we can even speak Orcish to each other. Oh, perfect. I believe. Let me let me just check to be sure, but I'm pretty sure that's when. Yep, Orcish. Good. So in Orkish, I say, um, I pretend it's a, if I, if I notice that you speak Orkish, then I pretend that I'm praying in Orkish. Uh, but you obviously know it's not a prayer. And I say, I explain everything that happened. I sent this adventure in, we had to run Orkish to Desmond. There's a lot of gold waiting for us. We'll just say that one of the harpoons was lost in the battle and we can destroy the skull once we find it. It was a mistake. Well, I have a feeling that things are going to go very differently than than what Fritz was telling us and that it might not even be an issue of having to tell Fritz that we didn't bring this, the, the harpoon back because I think he's trying to get us killed. Well, we have, um, I don't mean to be meaning to be, uh, well, rude, but Vesper here is, uh, still needs to prove herself and she is quite agile. So maybe send her in as a scout as we go in. Make sure everything's all right. Well, I think all of us will go in. It'll be, I mean, with all of us and with not having fool's gold weapons, I think we'll be okay. I know my head and I say, I trust you in this matter. I've done my business. Whatever you say goes, okay? All right. Well, let's go because even if he's trying to feed us the apocalypse skull, that still means there's an apocalypse skull and lots of adventures getting fed to it. And we need to put an end to that. 
I take out my like blacksmithing hammer and I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so with resolve to once again undertake the quest of killing a bandersnatch, you walk to the edge of town to the castle on a hill and we will fade to black there as we take a break. I think we're a bit overdue. Mm-hmm. See you guys on the other side. Bye-bye. <laughs>